Yo guys, welcome back to some more reaction video. Today, we're going to react to a rematch death battle between Link from Legend of Zelda and Cloud from Final Fantasy. Now, I'm very excited for this because in the last video, you saw me react to uh, death battle between the first match of Link and Cloud. And I must be honest, the animation is not that good. The battle was a bit meh. And, but now, with better graphics, better animation, I would expect a lot from this battle. Also, I want to point out something first. My money is on Cloud. I love Cloud. I think mainly because I don't really know a lot about Legend of Zelda. It was a very old game, but I know Link is still strong. But my money is on Cloud, okay? He is amazing, alright? No doubt about it, alright? So, if you have any suggestion, it's your choice. I just point out which one I would choose in this death battle. But anyhow, but for the video starts, I want you to please subscribe to the channel, click like for the video, and also turn on the notification button. Now, without further ado, let's sit back and let's watch this rematch death battle. Here we go. Link, the courageous and determined hero of Hyrule. Loud strafe, sword swinging, spiky haired Sephiroth Slayer. Each are powerful warriors in their own right, but in a fight to the death, which one will win? He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. In the land of Hyrule was a hero so great, even a goddess favored him. Destined to wield the Triforce of Courage, he fought Link. for his people it did, That's how it usually right. looks like. Moreover, it's so bad. He reincarnated through time to continue defending against evil. This hero's name no, that's much was Link. Better, Since Link's I guess. spirit had been reborn over and over, technically that means most Links are kind of the same guy. It's a real Link to the past. <laughs> Which is probably why he's so skilled with tons of different weapons, like his Hylian shield, and of course, the Master Sword. The Master, the Master Sword. Sword is no ordinary blade. Oh! Infused with sacred energy, it is evil's bane incarnate, capable of destroying magical barriers, dispelling curses, and slaying immortal monsters. But nothing's more badass than its laser beams and skyward strike. He could even charge it with lightning. You like that, Link Link? Link's carried hammers, clubs, spears, even boomerangs, and his talent with a bow is second to none. He has fire, ice, and shock arrows, and his light arrows possess holy magic. But the ancient arrows instantly consign foes to oblivion. Appearing oh, to yeah. So just one shot with that arrow and it's already over. Them into nothingness. And these souped up weapons have come in handy. Link's had his fair share of tussles defending the world from foes like Ganon, Vati, and Majora. Link has survived rolling through lava and while wearing the Seriously? golden gauntlet or titan's mitts, been strong enough to lift stone weighing well over 10,000 tons. And the four sword lets him split up into copies of himself. Talk about multitasking! With the Ocarina of Time, Link can summon storms, teleport across the land, and even travel through time with song. But some of that doesn't hold a candle to the Sheikah Slate. That thing can set remote bombs, move objects magnetically, and totally stop time for things. And it can summon his Master Cycle Zero. Motorcycles are all well and good, but his sailcloth is certainly a more elegant way to move around. So he's got a lot of cool stuff, but sometimes he's got to get sneaky about it. While he may be tough, Link can't always win fights with brute force. His claw shots are perfect for maneuvering around the environment, and his magic cape can turn him invisible. I can think of a lot of ways that would come in handy. Well, let's see. Dummy. Uh, dummy. Ha ha, got ya. You know, Link's weapons are very effective against sassy robots. Ooh, you can't see me coming now, can ya? Ha! Hey, why didn't you get hit? Uh, right, the magic cape also turns Link intangible. Huh. Well, guess there's no punch line. Seriously? Anyway, did you know Link's fast enough to roll away from Beamos lasers? Which are actual light beams. They burn things, move in a straight line, and the guide says they're lasers, so... There! As you can see, Link can dodge this laser at the moment it's fired. Given the distance between the two and the time frame, I mean, it, it depends on the player's reaction time that doing that. Of a second, so it's not always about the same. A tenth the speed of light. But, hey, now that's a reason to judge, say, yeah, more professional, me, I guess. Princess. Because if he didn't, no one would get out of the way in time. Holy one shit! Item Link it has fucked. simply oh, a mere vehicle to increase his speed or strength. The Triforce of Courage, a holy relic that offers mystic power to its bearer. 
including protection from transmutation. He's got some other spells too, like for shielding and healing, and his fairy spell lets him literally just turn into a fairy. Oh, look at him. It's all tiny and he can fly around. Get the fly sweater. Link's also been granted magic by great fairies and spirits of past Hylian champions. Mipha's grace can even revive him to full health after death. And if all this wasn't enough for him to just trash his opponents, Link's known to carry around a snack or two to help him out. While he usually has a limited supply of magical energy, a single bottle of Chateau Romani gives him unlimited magic for three whole days. That's nothing compared to his mask. These masks not only change his physical form, but give him unique abilities. Like how his Goron oh. mask increases his strength. He can even roll so fast he catches one. fire. But the fierce deity mask is the best. It basically transforms him into a dark god. Oh. Ten feet tall and 100% terrifying. With inhuman strength and the impossible helix sword. Fierce deity Link could easily overpower Majora. Who pulled the moon into the planet with enough force to destroy Damn. the continent. And cause planet wide destruction. Well. Sounds like he's got everything he needs to defend Hyrule. I mean, if you're chosen by a goddess, you gotta do what she says, right? With the boy clad in green committed to the cause, Hyrule can breathe easy knowing it's defended by such a worthy champion. Okay, now Cloud. On the planet Gaia, run by the Shinra conglomerate, one young man wanted to be a strong protector of others. Just like his hero, Sephiroth, the elite member of Soldier. This was Cloud Strife. The troops of Soldier are awesome! They get badass paramilitary weapons and get to cast magic from Materia. Materia is a byproduct of the life stream, an energy source that runs through the world. Green Materia casts offensive spells, blues for supportive spells, and yellow has commands. But red's the most powerful, because they can summon giant monsters! No wonder Cloud wanted to be a part of Soldier so bad. I'd want to too if I could have a giant Damn. dragon god as a pet. This is Bahamut Fury, among the most powerful summons in Final Fantasy history. Ooh. Capable of annihilating a moon, a feat worth over 140 exatons of TNT. <laughs> Which Cloud totally survived after he made it into the soldier program without any problems whatsoever. Nope, none at all. Does this do much foreshadowing? Uh, Cloud's time as a soldier mercenary was, well, it never happened. Despite his own memories saying otherwise, Cloud actually failed to join the program at all. All right, bear with me here. See, Cloud had a friend, a first-class soldier named Zack Fair. They went through a bunch of wacky adventures together, then got kidnapped by some weird cultists who injected them with alien DNA and Mako energy that what? supercharged them. It's a long story. Time and time again, Zack came to Cloud's rescue until one day, a rescue would be his final act. But before he fell, he gifted oh, Cloud his big old buster sword. Hey, what's a sword between bros? Especially when Zack had been there for Cloud so much in the past. Like how Zack was the one who helped Cloud adjust to the fact that he had never become a member of Soldier. Or how Cloud hadn't been the one who took the moon exploding either. That was Zack all along. Cloud's own history had affected him so much that he unintentionally took Zack's as his own. Jeez, sounds like he needs to do some heavy self-reflection. Cloud struggled with confidence ever since he was rejected from the soldier program. That, combined with the trauma from being kidnapped, experimented on, and watching his best friend die, fractured his sense of self. You know, Cloud not being who he said he was reminds me of someone, Wiz. Uh, what are you talking about? You know, like how you faked your identity to avoid paying all those student loans and Homeland Security is still looking for you and... <laughs> uh, hey, did you know, despite how the game works, Cloud can use materia without a weapon. Isn't that neat? Anyway, realizing his memories were faulty sparked Cloud's journey of self-repair. Though he had failed to become part of Soldier, he probably shouldn't have, because he's been in many, many fights just as, if not more impressive than those of Zack's resume. Remember that awesome dragon? He beat him! Bahamut's <laughs> super strong, but also fast enough to fly between planets in seconds. Hell, Cloud could even fly too! Uh, I guess, I mean, like he's, he's able to of... jump hundreds of yards yeah, up he can and only jump high. the sky not fly and up. lunge around. 
Yeah, it's basically flight. He can oh, also use okay. spirit energy for super attacks called limit breaks, like the classic Omni Slash. He's also worn several different types of gear over the years, but the one he's consistently kept is a certain ribbon which defends him from the majority of status effects, excluding time manipulation. He's dodged bullets, lasers, and electric attacks. He's casually sliced buildings in half, can cast literal nuclear explosions with his flare materia, and he even beat that handsome devil Sephiroth. I don't know how Sephi survived being impaled by a sword that's literally wider than he is, but <laughs> Cloud got to kick his ass multiple times. Even coming face to face with Sephiroth's ultimate attack, Supernova. Along the way, Cloud also destroyed Shinra. That's one way to get back at the folks who refuse to hire you. Oh, and he got an even cooler sword too. Get rid of that sentimental buster sword, buster, because <laughs> the fusion sword isn't here to play. With the fusion sword came a new version of Cloud. One who'd worked hard to resolve his personal issues and overcame any foe, mental or physical, in his way. So all that, on top of beating Sephiroth three whole times, proves Cloud puts up one hell of a fight. Despite Cloud's frustrating start as a young man with unattainable dreams, he grew up to become far more than he could have imagined. After saving the world more than once, Cloud Strife deserves the hype. Stay where you belong. In my memories. Like I said, I'm All picking right, Cloud for this battle. Come on, Cloud. Give me Cloud. Okay, here we go. Come on. Oh, the, the bike scene. Oh, wait, Nate is driving a bike as well? Oh, great. Oh, sick. <laughs> this is already sick already. Excuse me. <laughs> What's the point of smashing pots anyway? Oh. Stopping time, both of them. Continue. Stop lagging. Oh my god, I'm so sorry guys. It's lagging right now. Oh, four rings. Oh. Annoying fairy! Are those bombs? Oh no! Oh! oh is that a black hole? Grappling hook! Dude, the sword! Slash! 
Oh. Oh, wait. Holy shit, yes! Hell yeah, clown! Nothing to it. Woo! Yes! KO! Yes, Link thought it was time to split. Too soon? Yeah. Link had an incredibly versatile arsenal available to him, given the abilities he had from his various weapons and masks. And with stuff like the Sheikah Slate and Ocarina, the guy had so much to throw at Cloud that he could have easily gotten overwhelmed. Even with that against him, Cloud could match much of Link's arsenal with both his materia and superhuman ability. Link may have won a few fights with his time stop, but so would Cloud. For our purposes of determining who would win the most often, these essentially cancel each other out. Link's Master Sword and Triforce of Courage helped him counter some of Cloud's materia. Like, he wasn't getting turned into a toad or anything, but Cloud's Ribbon could do a lot of the same, especially against those fire, ice, and shock arrows. Since both had multiple ways to counter each other's more magic-based moves, and both had incredible healing spells, this really came down to their baser abilities. Like how Link dodging lasers put him at a tenth the speed of light, but Cloud kept up with Bahamut, who... Stop lagging. Why is it lagging? Flew between planets in 12 seconds. Since this looks like Neptune, and considering Gaia is a stand-in for Earth, the distance between them would be 4.3 billion kilometers. To travel that distance in 12 seconds means Bahamut Fury flew at least 1,200 times the speed of wow. light. So while uh, Link was smart, had more experience, and has fought foes faster than him before, Cloud could literally run circles around him without him noticing. Link's strength and power were nothing to scoff at, especially when scaled to Majora pulling the moon into a planet and destroying a continent. That would take an energy equivalent to over 60 exatons of TNT. However, Cloud was strong enough to endure similar attacks and return the favor in a devastating way. Like how he survived Zephyroth's supernova attack. Guidebooks confirm that the supernova is a blast that destroys dimensional space. Technically, it occurs in another dimension where the entire solar system is annihilated with oh, Cloud man. standing right there. It sounds crazy, but this means he can literally survive a sun exploding in his face. I mean, Seriously? it really messed him up, but still, it's a goddamn sun. Link's never had to deal with something of that magnitude before. <laughs> the hero of Hyrule put up an admirable fight and could certainly win in a few different ways. But Cloud's speed, strength, and powerful limit breaks meant that, more often than not, his victory was assured. Hell Link yeah. tried <laughs> force, but against Cloud, he had G no way out. The winner is Cloud Strike. Hell yes. <laughs> yes. Finally, Cloud won this battle. In the last, re last first battle, Cloud lost. Well, I think because the first battle, we only see a fraction of what Cloud can do. But in this one, I think we almost see the full, like understand his full force uh, in Clouds. But Link also, he did way well. He was legit a fair match for Cloud. But oh no, Cloud win. I am happy about that because Cloud is my man. He's awesome. He's sick. And he has a huge sword, okay? You can't blame that. And he's legit. Very, very cool. So yeah, that is amazing. I must say also the animation from this one, from the previous first battle to now, is that you see how much the improvement of the animation comes a long way. So legit animation, 10 out of 10. Battle, uh, I give it a 9 out of 10. I... No, I don't know why 9 out of 10. I thought it's really sick, but then that's why I think that, I guess. So, yeah, that's all for today, guys. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, click like for the video, and also turn on the notification button. Also, make sure to go to the channel, I'll put it in the description so you can see other death battles that you, any character you know. So, that's all. I'll see you guys next time. Take care and peace.